So now that we've seen the limitations and the problems with the common mirror with series feedback, Especially in this case, we haven't uh, done any experiments, but if you do any experiments, especially in simulation, which makes things a lot easier, you'll see that this stage, the way that it is, you get a lot of distortion. It's not good. I don't know why people <laughs> um, use these, why there are just so many examples of this around the internet. It makes no sense. So now let's look at something that's a lot better and that you can easily tune the um, the feedback so that you get your desired gain without upsetting your DC operating point, which is the common emitter with shunt feedback. Let's start by drawing a circuit that's almost the exact same thing that we had before, but with uh, some differences. Okay, let's start with our V plus. Then we go down to our collector resistor. Then we go to our PN, NPN transistor. From this point on, we go straight to ground. That's the first difference. So right off the bat, without even seeing anything here, what you have is a circuit that has a lot more gain than we had before because this is always going to be grounded. So all you have here is the that RE that we've calculated here. So the gain is just basically going to be the exact same thing that we discussed before, like 220 something. This was a 4.6K resistor. So, but now, the greatest difference here, this is going to look a lot like a non-inverting op-amp circuit. Now, here at the output, which you have, let me already just draw your uh, DC blocking capacitor, and this goes to V out. Okay. Now here, what you have is a resistor. Okay. Let's call this RF for our feedback, which goes to the base of our transistor. Okay, and then what you have here is, uh, let's say, an R2. Resistor here, okay, and here we put in let's say RI for R input for resistor at input and DC blocking capacitor and VN here, okay. Right off the bat, you can see that things changed up quite a bit. Before we start designing anything here. First thing that you have to know, a lot of gain. One of the ways that you can improve linearity and reduce distortion is to introduce tons of gain and tame that down by using feedback. This is, this is the exact same thing that we'll be doing here. Remember, it's something that I forgot to talk about here is that this topology as well as this topology is inverting. So if you get, for example, let's say um, one volt here, and let's say that this has a five volts gain here, so you get five volts here gain, actually what you have is minus five volts. So let me just draw this right here so that you can understand. So a small signal here makes a big signal here, but that signal is inverted. I messed that up, but I can put it right here. So what you have is usually like this. So let's say this is your input signal. Okay. Now your output signal is going to be like this. Okay. So when the voltage goes up at the base, it actually goes down here at the collector. This is going to be the key 
to understand how this circuit works. Now, for the first time in this series, we don't actually have to care about our input signal. Because as you can see here, our bias, we don't have that regular biasing that we did before. We actually have no biasing uh, in the standard term. Because this is going straight to ground, so whatever voltage you put here, it's not going to appear here at the emitter, it's all going to be current flowing. 100%, so if you try to bias this, it's just going to gobble up all that current and try to pass that current through here. And if you want, like the, the way to calculate the amount of current that's going to be flowing here, is just the current at the base times VBE, the, no VBE, the HFE. Now, let's not think about that, and let's think about everything here as just feedback. So, we know that we have VBE here. Knowing that, no matter the current that we pass through here, this point is always going to be at VBE. Because as soon as this thing starts to turn on, it's just going to shunt all the current that appears here at the base to ground. So it's always going to be at VBE. Knowing that, this is like a pseudo virtual ground, or virtual earth, as you see on op amps, for example, if you have a non-inverting op amp, let me just see if I can get some, okay, so paper here, if you have a non -inv a, an inverting op amp, like this, okay, you, for example, put this to ground, which is similar to this, but to mimic this, you would actually be, there would actually be a um, diode right here going to ground, okay? So just keep that in mind, but then you have, for example, a resistor here and your VN, okay? RC, RF2. And you have a resistor here. This goes to V out. And this is let's say RF2. If you if you try to measure this point right here, it's always going to be at zero volts. It's always going to be referenced to this point right here. So this is kind of like a black hole. But what's actually happening here is that all the current that's going through here an inverting amount of currents coming through here, and this is just uh, uh, like a destructive interference, and it's all going to this point right here. So the exact same thing is going to happen here, and let's look at that. So what we have here is this point is always going to be referenced to VBE. It's always going to be like around 0 0.6 volts. Now. In order for that to happen, this is going to act like a voltage divider. But a voltage divider at its output, we have VBE. Okay? So to get the DC operating point here, all we have to do is calculate a voltage divider where we have our voltage input, which is, um, sorry, our voltage input, which is going to be the midpoint that we We've calculated before here, but in this case, our uh, midpoint here, it's just going to be the V plus minus the VC set of this transistor, since we have no voltage here at the emitter, divided by 2 plus that same VC set. So it's almost going to be the midpoint of the supply rail, because usually the VC set is around like 0 0.1, 0 0.2 volts. So we can just assume that and put this point at the midpoint between the supply rails, okay? Now, so the voltage input, let, let me just draw this here. So to get, to uh, determine these two resistors, it's very simple, it's going to be like this. So you have V plus here. This goes through RC, which goes through or F, okay, which then goes to our R2 to ground, and this point right here is going to be the base of the transistor, okay? 
So this is going to be the V out of our voltage divider. And we know here something very simple. So uh, another thing here. I This is not V plus. This is going to be Vc. Okay. Because this is just going to be the input impedance going through here of the currents. So you can just ignore V plus. You should use Vc here. So this is like the simplified version of the voltage divider that we are going to be seeing here. So at this point, is going to be at 0 0.6 volts. Just an example. So it should be at VBE. Now you can plug, let's just say that this is at 6 volts. Okay which is the midpoint with V plus at 12 volts, okay? So let's calculate this voltage divider here. So the first thing we got to do to determine the DC operating point here, is going to be to set our RC. Just to make things a lot easier and make this, uh, these two circuits kind of the same, um, let's say I want the same one milliamp flowing through this transistor right here. In order to get that, we know we have, um, we want six volts here, because we've already defined that as our midpoint here. So we have a voltage drop across RC of six volts. So if we wanted one milliamp flowing through here, we would have to set RC at 6K. Since a 6K resistor is not common, let's go to the nearest value, which is 6.5K. Okay. Now let me also write that this point right here is going to be at around 6 volts. Okay. And here we always have a constant 0 0.6 volts. Okay. Now, first value that we've set, our C is going to be. 5.6k in our resistor divider, voltage divider. We have our 6 volts here, 1 amp is going to be flowing here, so let's determine the values of these two resistors. So, calculator time again. Let's use that program which I've used before, which I've wrote. So, we have a VN of 6 volts. Okay, now our uh, resistor here, we, we don't know. Let's, let's think about this for a moment. So this resistor right here is actually going to be used for our AC gain also, when we were going to see that later. So we have to set this resistor right here, so that later we also get a nice value here to set our gain. In this case, let's say I'm going to be using 100k Remember, you also need to dimension this resistor right here so that you have enough current flowing through the base right here to satisfy our one milliamp flowing through here. So we, for a HFE of around 100, you'd have one microamp flowing through the base. So just don't, don't make this resistor like one mega ohm or something silly like that because you will still need that current to flow through the base. So to make things easier, the calculations and all, Let's set this to 100k. So now we already have two resistors set. So let's put here 100k. Now the resistor we, that we need to choose is R2. So let's go. Our VN, 6 volts. Now R1 in this case is going to be RC in series with our 100k. So 105.6k like this. R2 is what we want, and our V out is going to be the VB here, so 0 0.6 volts. Now let's calculate this for R2. And what we get is 11.7K. This, again, is not an ideal value, because we, don't, we can't get a resistor like that, not commonly. So let's set that to... Um, 12k, which is close enough, we basically get the same V out. We're just going to have um, a little different of a, uh, in, um, 
a midpoint right here, which we can still calculate. We just keep this V out as six, and now we calculate for V in. So we are going to get a, our bias point here at the collector at 5.88 volts. So now we've determined the DC operating point of this whole uh, amplifier. So this we're going to set at 12K. Let me write this down here as well. So 12K here. Sorry, wasn't in focus. <laughs> so now we've set all of the resistors required for our DC operating point. This is already turning out just like this amplifier right here. Now, to set our AC gain, it's very simple. The AV here, our AC gain in this case, is just RC plus RF over our RI. That's basically it. It's very simple. So in this case, we can calculate it backwards. If we have that one volt peak to peak signal at the input, and we want, let's say, a five volts peak to peak signal at the output, we can calculate this. So we want basically a gain of five, right? So we can put five here at AV and just put these two values right here and we get our I. So I just did this whole thing showing how to calculate our I to get our desired gain and I realized uh, the camera wasn't recording. So hi, great. Uh, so let's actually calculate our I now. So to get our I, we have this equation, which is our gain at AC. And all that we have to do is to rearrange it and we arrange it by swapping these two. So RI goes to here, then we have AV down here. And we can calculate this very easily. So we want our gain to be five. So now we have RC plus RF. So it's going to be um, 105.6K, right? And this is going to be divided by five, which is the gain that we desire. And we get a resistor of 21.1. So that's, again, not a standard resistor. What we have to do is just go to the next value. And in that case, the next standard value is going to be 22K. Now we can redo this equation right here. We can uh, recalculate this knowing our two resistors. So I was about to show you how to calculate the gain for the new resistor of a 22K, but my camera randomly decided to stop recording for no reason. And I had to like literally like take the batteries out, <laughs> charge them a bit. And yeah, it was pretty rare. I also formatted the, the SD card. <laughs> no clue what happened there. I, I tried like 10 times to make like the same clip and it was always top, it always top recording like with one minute, but hey, so let's do this one last time, okay? So, now we've seen the uh, formula, so we're going to use the formula for AV. Now let's calculate the gain. So it is our 105k, 105.6k, okay? That is going to be divided by our I, in this case, 22k. That gives us a gain of 4.8. There it is. So 4.8. Which means that if we have a voltage here at the input of 1 volt peak to peak, we'll get out here 4.8 volts peak to peak. So very simple. So we've determined the DC bias, the DC operating point, also the AC operating point with the gain. It's very simple. In my opinion, it's a lot simpler than the <clears throat> series feedback. Here you learn a lot about the transistor, but with this circuit, it's simpler. It has less components. It's a lot more stable. It also gives you the advantage of separating the 
DC gain from the AC gain. You also get a lot less distortion with this design. So it's a lot more versatile. It's better all around. So I, I don't know why people still cling to this. But hey, this is a good stepping stone to learn more and understand how uh, an inverter, an inverting amplifier like this works. But this is actually the best way to do it. So I'm going to leave the video right here. It's already <laughs> long enough. So in this video, we've learned how to create a common emitter amplifier with series and shunt feedback. This is actually the, like the basis of what we are going to be doing in the actual headphone amplifier. But in the next um, episode in the series, we are going to make some experiments with this. We are also going to do some experiments with this. And if we have time, we're actually going to combine um, the, the, this circuit with an emitter follower, like we did in the previous video, and start to create the final headphone amplifier. Okay? So, but in the, in, the in the next episode, it's probably just going to be um, some experiments around this and coupling to a simple emitter follower and how do you can tap the feedback from there, okay? So that you get also the uh, voltage amplification and the current amplification. So this is going to be it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm sorry if this was like, if I made some mistakes here and there, I'm, I'm pretty nervous about all this. And uh, it's very simple when you're designing this stuff by yourself, you make all the calculations on a post-it note, you get everything ready, you go, to simulation just to make sure that um, everything is all right and then like everything gets done but here when you're filming and you you get like conscious about that people are going to be looking at this and stuff like that you just get so nervous <laughs> you maybe do some make some mistakes you say something dumb or you just uh, don't explain it the way that you thought in your head so just keep that in mind if you have any feedback leave it in the comments below if you have any questions same thing. So yeah, that's going to be it for now. So yeah, bye for now.